Good morning, grade 10s. Today we are going to start with our new chapter on tables. It's going to be our last chapter in Word before we move over to Excel. I'm very excited about Excel, but let's not get too excited about Excel because we have to finish this chapter on tables. And it is of vital importance that we understand how tables work because when we work with Word documents, tables are a very important part um, and a very important skill um, that you are required to have when it comes to Microsoft Word. So all in all, in, within this topic, we are going to look at how to insert tables into our documents, um, how to enter text into it, how do we manipulate the size of the cells? How do we um, manipulate the alignment of text within the cells or the alignment of the table? We are, I'm going to show you how to insert rows, how to insert columns or to remove them. We're going to format our table, either merging cells or splitting tables into two or splitting cells that has that was one into two rows or two columns or even more. Um, I'm going to show you how to manipulate the color and the size of borders, how to add shading um, to the table. And then lastly, we're going to look at how do we sort um, data or text within the table. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it basic calculation in a word table. All right, so I'll be going through the textbook, but I'm going to um, go over to Word and actually show you in a very practical way on how to do these things. Um, I encourage you to read with me through the textbook while um, looking at the practical implementation of that work. And then I will be helping you with activity one. But I ask you to also do activity one because you will need that document later on in this chapter as well. So let's get word over and let's get straight to it. How do I insert a table? There is only one option really. And I think you could guess it correctly. We go onto our um, insert tab. If I click on there, you will see there's a tables group and here we find our table. So if I click on this little arrow that shows down, I can actually draw up my table. So I must know how many um, columns or how many rows do I want. So in activity one, we will have to insert a table. So I'm going to assume I do correct for the um, for activity one already. And it asks us to create a table with three columns and four rows. So I can either um, click on here and then say, OK, three columns and four rows. So I simply highlight um, the cells that I want and click on OK. And over here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit, you can see my table was insert. All columns have the same width, all rows have the same height. And if I select a cell, so I can go and select with the mouse any cells that I want to type text in. The, another way, and I'm going to take this table away, is also clicking on insert and the table but instead of highlighting this I can click on insert table and we have an insert table dialog box and here you can specify I only suggest you using this insert table dialog box if you um, if your number of columns and number of rows exceed the options that you are presented with when you um, select insert table in this case, otherwise I can just um, say number of columns three, number of rows four, 
And then auto fit behavior. So the, the fixed column width um, means that all columns are the same size, or um, there is a way that we can um, fit it to contents, which means if I type text in, it will the column width will be exactly the size that my text um, allows it to be or prescribes it to be. Um, I wouldn't fiddle with any of these settings and definitely not remember dimensions for new tables. For now, we are only interested in this. All right. And over here, and you can see my table looks exactly like the one that I've inserted just now. Okay, then um, I'm going to paste something that I copied, um, and that's some tips um, that comes out of your textbook. So if you're reading with me, um, you can see that. So we can, if, if you're inside the table, I can use the tab key to jump to the next um, cell. If I'm at the end of the row and I press tab, it actually jumps to the first cell in the second row, etc., etc., etc. If I want to, and sometimes it's necessary, um, I want to actually use an actual tab within the cell, then I have to use control. I hold control while I press the tab key, and you can see I'm now using a tab within a cell. Um, so and I can now press tab. If I press shift tab, it actually jumps backwards within the cell. Um, I can also use the arrow keys um, to move around. But if I'm in the last cell and I press the arrow key, it actually jumps out of the table. And then I have to press it again to jump inside the second row again. But this is a way to man, um, maneuver within the table. If you are in the last cell and I press the tab now, it will add a new row within my table. All right. Um, so then for activity one, let's quickly do this. I'm just taking the last row away. Um, so to take it away, you can Highlight the entire row um, by clicking on the side, or you can highlight a row. In this case, it's empty, so it doesn't matter which um, row I've been um, taking away. And now you can literally right click, and there's an option that says delete cells. So if I say delete cell, and I can say shift, um, shift cells up or left, and here's an option that says delete entire row. And if I press OK, it now deleted the row. So for activity one, I have to do the following. And any text formatting, font and so on, I can still change like I would ma um, manipulate normal text um, with you know, other text. Um, all that formatting applies within text in the table as well. So I want to make this bold. So I can either press bold here or I can press control B to make it bold. And I'm going to type in the animal. Um, I'm jumping to the next spot and I can now say spring buck and antidorcas marsupialis. Um, and I'm sure that I might have, no, it's spelled correctly. I don't, I just, the Latin words are not really recognized. Um, now, you can see that I would have to make this bold as well. If I have this, this last cell bold, and I say here, for example, tree, and I create a new line by pressing tab and start typing in there, it automatically recognizes the formatting of the previous cell. But um, we don't want another cell. I can also highlight all of these cells and apply all formatting that I want for this um, cell at once. So I'm going to press Control B. So it takes the bold away and I press bold again. And now if I type my flower in here, you can see it is 
fold. King, ooh, I can't spell King. Protea, and the Latin um, word is Protea Sinaroides. Okay, and my that one is the bird, blue crane, and it's the Anthropoides paradisia. Okay, a tree is the yellow wood. Wood and that Latin word is podocar us latifolios. Okay, I'm glad I don't have to study Latin. Okay, and I'm gonna remove my hints and then it actually asks us to save this file as national symbols. So I'm just gonna browse the PC and I'm gonna simply gonna put it um, under my documents, schoolwork, cat. We are busy with distant learning, grade 10. And I'm gonna create a week five here. And I'm gonna actually put it in there. Create a new document, not animal, I'm gonna call it national symbols. Okay, and I'm going to use this later on. So I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna close this. I'm simply gonna open a new document um, so that we can continue with our work. Okay, there's another activity um, that is called um, food fair. There you have to um, make some format changes. So what I'm going to do, I'm not gonna open the document because I want you to actually do it yourself. So I'm just going to insert a table. I'm going to show you some of the things that they ask you to do. For example, um, the you have to change the, the, the color of the text to white. So I'm going to um, merge these cells. So to represent the one in the table, um, don't worry about this. We'll cover that um, a little later. But I'm going to change the alignment of my text here so I can go to home and I can click on the alignment there or if you if I click if I click here and now inside the table you can see that there's table tools on your ribbon that appear so if you click on these you can actually um, you know have certain layouts pre style right you can um, pre styled um, layouts, um, you can manipulate the shading, colors, borders, etc. And then we have the layout of our table. And over here in the alignment group, you can actually change the alignment of the text in the cells. So if I, for example, say center, middle, um, I you can see it's now center aligned. If I want the same alignment for the entire table, I can click with my mouse on that little um, icon here on the top left and um, if I click on it it highlights the entire table and I can now um, you know select the alignment that I want and you can see now that all the text is center aligned although I don't want that I'm, I'm going to keep it at that just the middle one I'm going to center align and I'm going to type in here senior international food fair okay and they've applied a shading so to apply a shading in in the in the cell um, I can go to design and click on shading and I can now select a color and now if I want to change the the, the color of the text um, I can actually go to home and here in the font group I can change the color to maybe white and you can see it changes it to white so all the other text formatting that we have done previously we can do um, in this table so activity two um, I would like you to do on your own then 
I'm going to use this table as well to show you quickly how to manipulate the row heights and row sizes. So if if I'm if I take my mouse and I go between, you can see if I move onto the line with the with the cursor, um, this little sign comes up. If I click and drag down, I can change the size of the row, and the same counts for the column. So I can make the columns bigger and smaller. And you can see that it applies to all columns um, and all rows. If I highlight text, so let's say I've got text in um, text in here, and I highlight it, and then I now obviously it doesn't. I have to highlight the entire cell, and I now manipulate. Um, the column width, then it only applies to the cell that I'm currently using. But that's only for the column, not for the row. All right. So if I want to um, manipulate all, um, then I select just the cell. But if I double click in here and now change this width, then it will only apply um, to that one cell. Okay, um, if I can also manipulate the size, let's, for example, I can highlight all of this, and I um, go to the layout table, and over here we have a height and a width of the table. So I can distribute all columns evenly, so I can do that, and you can see now that in the first, because I've only highlighted the first row, all columns are the same size. If I want to apply that to all of the text, I highlight all of them and I can say distribute columns evenly and it does it. I can't do that with the entire table because my first row is merged. So highlight all of them and then you can either give it a custom width or you can distribute them all evenly. Um, I can also click on auto fit. Um, let's quickly do that. Um, auto fit contents, and you can see that it made it much smaller. So these cells are empty, that's why they are smaller. And here I've got text in, um, and that's why it is slightly larger. All right, so that's auto fit. You can also it to, um, to window, then it auto fits to the entire um, window and you can have a fixed column width as well um, which you can specify over there um, then one last thing um, before we move on is the margins or the yeah, the cell margins how how is text um, how close is the text to the border and i can manipulate that with text margin um, i'm going to put this over so my left and right is by default 0 0.19, but I can manipulate, you know, the top and the bottom as well. Let's make it um, 0 0.35, and you can see my, my table becomes now larger. Um, I'm going to change the row height. Um, I'm going to change the cell margins for this cell. I'm going to make them smaller, or I'm actually going to make them zero, so that you can see the difference. So over here, I can now type text. Okay, um, let me just split this table so that you can actually see. And this one, I'm going to change the cell margins to like four. No, not four, zero point four. So you can see the difference um, now. The, the text is 0 0.4 centimeters away from the border. Okay, um, then let's quickly see if I have everything else. All right, um, quickly, uh, table properties. If you right click on inside the table and you can then scroll down and you can open the table properties dialog box um, it looks like this and from here 
you can basically change all the um, properties of the table as they as you could in the ribbon all in one place this you can manipulate the table alignment within the page and this manipulates the text around the table so if my table is not the width of the entire um, document I can still have other text next to it and you can um, manipulate that with the text wrapping option then we have row options we can set it to a specific height column to a specific width um, we can um, you know the the alignment within the cells the preferred width and then um, you know we can have text and titles and so on alternative text if the table doesn't display etc but that is unimportant for us all right um and oh yeah just one last thing um if you look at this we have a borders and shading option over here if you click on that um you can actually manipulate the borders but we're going to do that um, on another day you can actually you know select the borders that you want to show you can um, select the the kind of border that you want and you can see that i can apply different borders um, different colors um, on different sides of the table etc so we can manipulate our table like this and then i can either apply it to the table to just the cell or to the entire paragraph I'm going to cancel this and then we have options over here that I can select still as well and that is my cell margins that I can manipulate there so you can just you know click um, and experiment a little bit but this table property dialog box is very important for you and most questions in a test or an exam um, that are table related you could could manipulate over here except um, when it comes to the um, adding of rows merging and splitting of cells but in terms of formatting um, you can manipulate those um, then maybe one last thing that before we um, come to activity two um, i can manipulate the text direction as well so at the moment it's from left to right so if I click, if I select this text and I change the direction, um, I can click, you can see it, it jumps from, from left to right to up to down or from down to up. And then we can change the alignment of this um, appropri or, um, appropriately to the direction of the text. Right. Um, then we, I'm asking you to do activity two, although, um, yes, for activity 2.1, you have to open again the national symbols and then you have to work on the layout tab to use the auto fit command and the cell size group to adjust the column width according to their content. So I'm quickly going to zoom out here. I'm actually going to open our national symbols again going to highlight the entire table um, zoom in so that you can see I'm going to click on layout I'm going to say auto fit according to content you can see now that this table um, all the column width is now um, according to the length or the yeah, the length of the text that is found in the cells um, and that completes actually activity 2.1 and then there's still a second one and a third one, which I'm asking you to do on your own with alignments and so on. Now I'm going to, for good, close this one. I'm going to save it again. And here comes our other one. Um, for, the, for the next part of working with tables, I'm going to show you how to insert tables. I've already shown you that when you're in the last cell and you press the tab key, it adds um a, a row but i can also if you if you watch closely if i move my mouse 
my mouth, <laughs> my mouse to the side and between the cells on the side, there's a little plus sign. So if I click on it, it actually adds a row and I have the same with a column. So if I click on there, it inserts a, 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 a column. But you can see now my table is way over the side. Um, so what I can do is I can actually drag it smaller um, so that it is on one side. If I, let's quickly um, show you. So if I have text in there and I add a column, so it will add it in between these two um, rows. And the same with the rows, it will add it between these two rows. Now, if I want to insert more than one, I can, for example, highlight all of them, right click, and I can say insert, and then I can say insert rows above or insert rows below. If I do that, I will actually add the number of rows that I've highlighted. So if I only highlight two and I right click and I say insert rows below, now it only inserted two rows. I'm going to delete them again because we don't need them. So you can see that by just simply highlighting a row and right clicking, you can say insert. And there you can also delete um, rows. And there's a couple of other options that are related to tables. The Another way to insert a row is to actually go to the ribbon, um, to our layout tab. And then here on the left in the rows and columns group, you can say insert above, insert below, insert left, insert right. And in that way, we can add columns and rows. Um, and the same way you can delete also. So if I, if I, for example, highlight these, or let's say the last two, and I can press delete, and then here I can say delete cells, delete columns, delete rows, delete table. I'm going to say select delete rows. Um, I can do the same with a, um, a column. Quickly, just to sh um, show you that I can, if I have a couple of rows here, I'm going to just insert three, and I want to select an entire column. So I can either highlight it like this, or I can move with my mouse up until it becomes this little black arrow that shows down. And if I highlight it, it will select the entire column. Now I can right click and say delete columns, or I can press on the layout tab and select delete and say delete columns. And now my table only has four um, columns left. And now I want you to do activity three as well. Um, again, you will start with um, the national symbols activity, and then um, you will have to open the dog breeds activity and complete the instructions there. All right, so the three activities um, that I want you to complete today, I don't think it's too much um, work. Um, all the shortcuts are very nicely explained in your um, in your activities and if there is any difficulties or any problem that you have please don't hesitate to ask any question so yeah that concludes our lesson for today